this week on Not Just Another Sex Podcast. I need to focus and I need to get right within myself. Remove the distractions, which were dating and sex. I went absent for like two years and oh I didn't God. talk, but oh I stopped God. going out. I stopped Damn. doing everything. <laughs> Listen, I had gotten arrested. I was like, this is a lot. Yeah, you got arrested? <laughs> right. <laughs> this news is me. This news is me. This news is my point. I ain't around you on time. Hey, sugar. I feel like there are so many different things that I need to learn as an adult. I'm this nasty on a regular day, like on a Tuesday. I am your host, Samaya Burton. And don't worry, it's not just another sex podcast. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to Not Just Another Sex Podcast. I'm your host, Samaya Burton, and yay for you joining us today. We have a great conversation for you. Today, I'm joined by my friends, um, Dijon and Dara. Say hey, y'all. What's good, cuz? What's happening? <laughs> it's too much. I put too much on it. No, no, no. If they're watching the visuals, they see all the gold, and it'll just make sense. So. Okay. Call me Mr. T, then. Look. First of all, it's giving '90s on started. that side of the room. Like he got mm-hmm. on the matching set, and you know you got he on the HBC. Yeah, yeah, it looks y'all look very like warm colored. You know. Anyways, make sure y'all watch the visuals because we look the fuck good. Okay. I would like to add that we are filming at the Something Extraordinary Content House today, um, the SE Content House, which is owned by me, and I love our set. So shout out to our interior designer Naya. She did an amazing freaking job. Big so, up. Big ups. I saw what you did there. Something extraordinary. S-E. S-E. I saw what you did there. Did you S-E. catch it? I saw what you yeah. did there. Did I you caught catch that. It? Did I you caught catch it? it. I caught oh, it. Oh, y'all, y'all picking up what I'm putting down? If you know me, if you if you ain't you know new to this, but you true to this, then you know that S-E stands for Sexual Essentials, which is the first million dollar business that I started. Mm. Okay. 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 Big, bad, big yeah. money. Go ahead. Spice yes. it up. It sounds raw. <laughs> 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 so let's get into the show. Um, we're going to start off with our adult tip of the day. The adult tip of the day is a segment dedicated to giving you a life hack, giving you an adult tip, my therapist, my therapist says, or whatever, something to make um, adulting a little bit easier, just taking it in one day at a time. Um, so today's adult tip of the day is live now and don't save it for later. Amen. And when I, Amen. All mm-hmm. right. When I thought of this one, I was thinking about, you know, we was talking last night about how we had couches in our house that you couldn't even sit on, like amazing couches. Um, we had people over at the content house and we were pouring champagne and they were like, oh, get the get the throwaway cups. And I was like, no, get the glasses. Like, Listen. They, like they were like, these are nice. Gla-. Yeah, use it. Like, I'm not saving it for the queen right, to come over. Like, right. like, use it. Yeah. Like, use it now. And I, I'm very proud of myself for like... I'm a perfectionist, and so I, I usually wait until everything is where it needs to be, and it's like, I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to save that outfit for another time. I don't want to, like, wear it now. Do it now. Eat it now. Like I started using my dishwasher. What? Yeah. That's <laughs> a never, big step. That is a big step. You know, you. black households, you don't use your dishwasher. I, I still wash dishes by hand. Yeah, yeah I still wash dishes I said, by you hand. you know what? I can buy me a Cascade pack or two now. <laughs> <laughs> I bought the, the jumbo bag from Target, Listen. and I was like, no, I'm serious. I'm going to use this dishwasher, you know, and not I just to I spend this dry. money just so the dishwasher can be sitting here. <sighs> so, yeah, so I'm, I'm at that point where I'm ready to use the fine china in my life. I'm ready to take the experiences, not wait, do your bucket list items now. What are you waiting on? Like, I feel like we save up all this money money mm-hmm. and then we never do it or you know like I used to have a bad habit of like oh I bought something really nice for myself but I was too scared to mess it up or get it dirty and I never enjoyed it then I grew out of it and it's so like now damn. everything's a museum yeah <laughs> yes that's exactly what it is right yeah. you got the couches you don't sit on them we just looking at them and they're amazing and they're right. gorgeous like I got 30 really... old couches that look pristine because ain't nobody sat on them yeah, in 30 years what is a museum? <laughs> yeah. you can't really enjoy it right, right? you can't you, touch you, you, yeah. Yeah. yeah so I don't want my life to be a museum so um the adult tip of the day is to live now don't save it for later hey you guys it's your host Samaya And for those of you who didn't know, I'm also the CEO and founder of Sexual Essentials. One of my favorite parts about building that brand was creating a learning platform that has over 250 workshops, interviews, and so much more. Some of my favorite components are the sex position demos. Yes, you heard that right. Demos. They're featuring some people that you may already know. Good Moms, Bad Choices has demonstrated some positions for us, as well as Dara. You remember her from our first episode. Those are some of my faves, as well as the lingam and yoni massages. These are great additions to add to your oral loving for your partner. Yes, I said oral loving. I'm trying to keep it clean, guys. Anyways, they are great additions and a great way to spice things up. 
Outside of our master classes, add one of these on to your normal routine and really wow your partner. Click the link below or in any of the links in our bio and sign up for our courses today. All right, now back to the show. Um, all right, so moving on to Twitter Talk. Today's Twitter Talk, um, well, first of all, Twitter Talk is the segment where we pay homage. 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 Don't pronounce the H in French. Oh, dang. We should have been, you should have been told me I that. told you that already. It's okay, though. Oh, dang. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, you have how many episodes? I've been told you this. <laughs> Look here, let's let's all right, yeah, pay attention, pay attention. All right, today's Twitter talk is that um Twitter talk is there um to pay homage to uh black Twitter and because almost every viral topic that stretches across um other platforms usually starts from a Twitter thread or you know, it's just it's a unique platform. So Thanks. um today's question is what's your get hype song? Like the songs you gotta play before you do some shit. What is it? Why? What's what's y'all's? Dejan? Yeah, go ahead. Look, if you book. Hey. <laughs> Take it back hey. to Tally. Okay, okay, yes, Nook, if you book. Time. Yeah. Mine is um, Cardi B um, living my best life. Like usually before any work thing, like any interview, I have to hear you that do song. Love that song. I love that. Like love before the hell I, out that song. I do. <laughs> anytime, like I've shown up to interviews and I couldn't play it in a car and like or something happened and I got there and they're like, "Do you need anything? You want some water?" I was like, "Hey, do you?" Have a speaker here <laughs> because I and need like four and a half minutes. And give four me four minutes because I'm gonna listen to the whole yeah. song. I'm gonna dance word and everything. For word bar for bar. Yes, yeah. I, I remember at essence. I was like, yeah, I can't, can't I play my jam? Like <laughs> I need to hear it. That is my song. We're here listening to my headphones or something. But that is my song before anything. Um, I don't think I have a get hype song, but if I want, if I'm already excited, <laughs> first of all, Beyonce ran a song that's gonna get me every time. Mm. But also, them Disney sing-alongs be hitting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm finna... We, we don't talk about one? Bruno which, your ass which, to get yeah. <laughs> We don't talk... All them in the car yeah. getting it. I, we don't talk and, You know, about people them. see you dancing in the car, and I know people are like, well, she jamming. I said, you don't know to what, though. Be <laughs> <laughs> Hakuna Matata my ass in here. <laughs> you don't even need the movie. I just need I the know. soundtrack. I just, if, if it's a song I can sing along to, then I'm hype. Because I don't know the words to shit. <laughs> I don't know, so the, words I don't know the words to nothing. So if it's something I actually know the words to, I'm like, oh, watch out now. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Yeah. yeah, I know me. I'll put a song on repeat for... <sighs> for the trillion for the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just thought, think if you like something, why wouldn't you want to do it again? Because you like it. <laughs> I want to like That's it later. That's how about movies, too. But we ain't going to go there today. Yeah. And food. That, too. It's all right. <laughs> it's all right. No judgment. We all have our things. We all have no, our things. But <laughs> you know, I'm you're my, judging. You're my friend, so it all is right. what it is. All right. So those I get hype songs. All right. So today's topic is about um, be- <laughs> Yeah, we got peanut gallery in here today. Um, recording, recording live. Okay. Live recording in progress. Um, today's topic is about n- being able to get to that age where you don't need liquor to have fun. Yes. Mm. How do y'all feel? Do y'all feel like y'all are that are at that age where you don't need liquor to have fun? Definitely. I've been past that point. Yeah, absolutely, without yeah. a doubt. Were y'all like that in y'all went to school? Well, I know y'all went to school. Y'all went to school with me, but the folks don't know you. <laughs> I was say, we didn't now you know we went to school yeah. together. So, so did you guys go to school <laughs> around here? Yes, we did. Yes. We okay. Did. Well, when you were in college, the books. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want to let everybody know you're smart. Um, did, was it always like that? When I first went to college, no. Social anxiety, like, if I really, I didn't want to be in the house all the time, but I also yeah. going outside was very, like, it was intense for me seeing that many people all the time. So I was like, okay, let me start drinking, you know, get loose so I can be outside, but... I ain't gonna hold you. The older you get, your stomach is not the motherfucking same. And so, <laughs> the alcohol be tearing me up. I can't do it no more. Also, I don't feel the need to, like, that, I don't need that, uh, I don't need that crutch, right? right. I don't need it mm. anymore to make me feel good in the moment. I can joke and laugh sober, high, drunk, whatever it is. I don't need anything to make me feel better or to be myself anymore. Mm. And I think that's part of that is getting older and being more comfortable with who I am and right. being willing to be who I am in public, not having to put my avatar on to present myself to other people. That's real. Yeah, I, I echo that. It's because when you get to college, it's kind of like, 
this is the thing to do. Mm -hmm. Drink, have yeah. fun, turn up. And then when you graduate, you've been doing it for so long, you think. You're tired. You yeah. think it's, a, it, it's. This it's, is the standard. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's the standard everywhere else you go in different parts of your life. So to, to Dara's point is, I think when you get very, very comfortable with yourself and you know yourself, you realize, like, I don't need the liquor. I don't need this. I don't right. need that to be myself in a in any environment. And I think that was the biggest thing for me once I started to cut down on drinking a lot. I still drink, but I don't mm -hmm. drink to get drunk. I right. drink mm -hmm. just to say, you know what? I just want a drink or two because I want it. Yeah. Not because everybody else around me is doing it. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's real. Because sometimes it's like with social drinking, because everybody else is drinking, yeah. Like, yeah. I want to feel that same or I want it to be right. that funny. I want to be on I that want, level. Yeah, yeah. I want to be on that Nobody level. Nobody said anything to you. You just look and you're like, yeah. right, everybody's drinking. I need to get with the you're program. Not as your mind mm -hmm. tells you that. Yeah. yeah, that you're not fitting in or right. whatever. Right. Um, I feel like for me... It was. I definitely have like social anxiety, and it used to make it used to make things easier. But also, like I know that I struggled with over drinking, like being an alcoholic. And mm -hmm. so for the longest, it's like I couldn't even tell because in your twenties, everybody is drinking. Right. All of them can't be alcoholics. Like I mean, we were little mini we're alcoholics. We're all drinking to excess. For, that. Right. Yeah. We're drinking in excess, but it's like that's the phase in your life that most people mm -hmm. do. Your early twenties, and then you graduate college, and then like now you got a little money in your pocket, and so there's the aesthetic of going out to a place that's nice. And and being able to have a drink. Yeah. But for me, I realized that I needed to have a drink. Like, I could not be comfortable. And there was a mix between, one, just my history with alcohol, but also the... I shouldn't... Am I hanging around people that actually make me feel comfortable? Or am I only comfortable when I'm drinking around these people? Maybe mm -hmm. you don't mm -hmm. need to be... Maybe you're not as comfortable as you think. That's if right. you You know, yeah. if you need to have a drink. Because now... My circle is so solid that I'm so comfortable that I'll be like, no, y'all should have a drink. Like, y'all should have a drink and <laughs> like enjoy yourself. But, you know, I don't drink anymore. Mm -hmm. And it's totally fine. Like, I haven't missed it. You know, if anything, I feel like I miss the aesthetic of like having a wine glass or something in my hand or a short glass. Like, yeah. it's just a vibe. Um, but ginger beer works fine. I would say, but you can put Gin other things in it them does. cups. It does. Ginger beer in my cup. Like, it's still, it's more so like holding the wine glass that I just want to feel. Right. Um, but yeah, so did you guys, do you guys, what do you do then? If you don't, do you guys drink now? Yeah, I drink. Yeah, I drink still. Okay. But like you said, not to excess and the drinking now is not because I need to, not because I'm trying to hide but behind it. To, yeah. yeah. For me, I just like things that look good. I have this weird <laughs> fetish about <laughs> drinking random drinks. I just want to taste everything, but I don't want to finish it. Mm. And then, not to mention all that sugar starts catching up to you. Again, I'm going to mention, when you get older, there's a lot of things you got to stop yeah. doing. Right. The sugar get, catches up to you. You get a headache. You feel nauseous. So I've started, like, now if I do drink, I have to take, like, half a gummy or something to settle my stomach. Mm. Because otherwise, I don't want to wake up sick tomorrow. Yeah. And then I was like, and people are like, well, I'm going out on a Wednesday. How are you getting up for work? <laughs> 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 Baby, are you functioning tomorrow? No. And then you going out to party and drink hard? I want to be able to go out in the middle of the week and go home and be Facts. able to wake up the next yes. day and be okay. Be okay. None yeah. of this, like, I'm hungover. I can't function. I'm too old And it for hurt that. for, like, three to five five business days yeah, afterwards like, why and, my toes hurt and i think we i think we at the age where like you don't even have to drink a lot to actually feel sluggish the next morning exactly yeah, that's, that's yeah. the shit that yeah. bothers me because when it hinders my schedule in terms of what i need to get done because i, I move through the day like this yeah it, it becomes uh annoying that damn like i shouldn't have drank last night and then it's just weighing on you the very next day mm -hmm. so that's that's the that's a pet peeve of mine when something hinders my schedule because i'm always right. on the go and it's because of I decided to drink one too many the previous night. Then it's just like, all right, let me let me put let me put the the drink down and start thinking about things um, more clear. I felt like COVID definitely was a catalyst in me realizing, you know, I have to figure out how to stop drinking. Like, mm -hmm. I'm one of those people that believe that you can have any anything in balance, and you Thanks. know what I mean, like. Mm -hmm. But what I realized was that's not true. And that I'm talking about that blew me. Because I was just like, no, if you have discipline around it, you should be able to do anything. And I was just like, liquor is not good for me. Like, it doesn't work well with me. And I'm not talking about, like, just being drunk and being hungover. I mean, I felt like I, did, I felt shame after drinking. Mm -hmm. I felt like that's when... 
if anything, I misinterpreted the most stuff. I just feel like it was never a good reaction. Well, afterwards. It was doing what it was supposed to do, right? Alcohol is a depressant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's sending all sorts of wrong chemicals into your body. And then we using it to lift ourselves up. Meanwhile, it's doing exactly it's what's supposed to. Yes, yeah, it's doing yeah. it's exactly what's supposed to be doing to you. It's a downer. This is I feel like where you insert the facts about you know alcohol <laughs> right here. Yeah. And um, for me, it was it was numbing. You mm-hmm. know, I didn't mm-hmm. feel things when I was on it. And unfortunately, when drinking, that means that what was lying dormant for me always reared its head. And it was just right. like what would even come out. Just I don't I was just so confused and I was like, well, why is it me? But remember at that time I didn't even I hadn't even addressed my parents with the fact that hey, I'm not okay. Mm. So it was just like I, I kept getting into situations and alcohol was the catalyst and even putting myself in dangerous situations and it was just like I don't know how to and it would feel like and you know what's why I didn't really know there was a problem because I was doing everything I was supposed to be doing. It's not like I was like You were functioning. I was yeah, functioning was well. Functioning like yeah. I was functioning well. Um and I feel like, it, and you know what got me was that it helped me realize, okay, what makes me feel happy? So I would do something and be like, dang, I didn't even drink. And that that felt good. And right. I, I realized that's not normal for everybody. You're the <laughs> only one that needs to have a drink before you go do anything. But because I was getting stuff done, I didn't, you know, really realize it was, um, it was a distraction for me. Do you guys have any distractions, like anything that you've let go because it's become a distraction or realize, you know what, I can't have everything or I have to monitor this thing for some reason it doesn't mix well with me I'll say this for me it was wine as you know I used to be yes. a he used to own a brand that had wine used, in yeah, it I used yeah. to have a wine brand uh, did a wine show the whole nine but uh, I started drinking a lot of wine when we met in college. And Damn, just I became, sound hella negative. Huh? <laughs> sound like I brought you down. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't you. You just like wine. I like wine. So let's, 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 let's drink chill. more let's wine. Chill. <laughs> so I like to drink wine around people that like to drink wine because it just makes the conversation better, right? So for me, it was I love drinking wine, playing music, and having a conversation. To me, that's a vibe. Yeah. Like, anywhere you go, that's a vibe. So... I used to drink, I used to kill a bottle like a day. Like I remember easy. that. Like I remember easy. that. You were living on the beach. Yeah, I was living across the street from the beach at the bachelor pad. Man, I was living life. <laughs> like, you know. Cooking a little salmon. Cooking and a little it's, salmon. Oh, my God, a little salmon. A little, a little salmon. salmon. Make a little, little cooking video. Like, it was, a, it was a vibe. No, it was yeah. definitely a vibe. It, so it nothing, doesn't seem bad. Yeah, so it never seemed bad. But to your point, when the pandemic happened, a lot of shit happened. Like, yeah. A lot of different things came at me at once. And it was just... You know, everybody thought the world was going to end. Like, <laughs> nobody knew what COVID was when it first came out for the first 30 days. So for me, you know, I, I, I picked up the wine bottle and I was drinking every day. And I wasn't feeling good about myself knowing that I was drinking so much. And I thought wine for me was like, hey, this is this is a thing that helps me set the vibe. But what I came to realize was that I was drinking it so much to a point where it felt like a vice Mm -hmm. felt like something that I I needed to kind of escape and I did a I I did a quick shift and you you know this very very well like once towards the end of 2022 uh, I stopped drinking for maybe a couple of months and I said you know what let me do a a self-assessment and I think that's what you did when you realized that liquor wasn't really doing anything for you in your life other than b- reminding you of traumatic experiences or putting you in situations that was dangerous. Mm-hmm. It was the same for me, a little bit different, was that I wasn't comfortable with myself the more I drank. So I said, you know what, let me put it down. And then I got to know myself a little bit better and I realized like, you know, I don't need this, yeah. you know, liquid courage to feel like myself because yeah. I feel like myself. To your point, from from uh, what it does to the body, would wake up sluggish, all that shit. So it was just like I needed to put it down, and I went from drinking like a bottle of the day to honestly like rarely having a glass once every two months. For me, the pandemic definitely reminded me like I, I felt very alone. It was the pand when the when I cut my parents off, the pandemic happened like a couple of months later. And so I realized I just was not in a good place and I needed like help. And I remember um, I had told a friend, uh, a friend in the past, she was my friend and Dara and I texted him and I was like, I don't think I'm okay. Like, 
my liver is hurting. Like my stomach is hurting. Like when, like I just took a sip of a drink and like my stomach is hurting. And I realized I really hadn't told anybody how much I was drinking. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. like Daryl would come in town like during the pandemic and we would hang out or Dijon would, you know, be there yeah. we have a drink and it makes sense. But I live alone. So most of those times uh, people are not nobody drinking. Don't see nobody what you're realizes doing. like oh, you're we still see what we see. drinking. Now, to you be do. honest, I did see it. Yeah. But also I, such I a didn't see it. Like, I, I did definitely see it. Didn't there see was it. times yeah. we'd be and it would be just like we in the house chilling and I was like, dog, my dog drunk. And but like yeah. why are we drinking so much while we're sitting here? We're not doing anything. Yeah. Yeah. Like we're not doing and anything. And then you would start acting way where I'm like, this is not Samaya. I was like, like you said, you're your inhibitions are lower now, right? So yeah. things that you've been suppressing are coming up. And right. I was like, she... But she, how do you calm like her it was, down it was, and stop her without it hurt. being offensive? Yeah. Yeah, she's hurt. Like, she's hurting and you don't know what to do because also I've been dealing with it in pieces. Yeah, yeah, so they even, fully addressed it. You know, and, and yeah. even still addressing it, I'm grieving. Right. I'm mourning. Like, my, I'm, I made a, a hard boundary with my parents and just decided you know what I'm not going to do this but yeah. it's not like I wanted to do it I, I wanted to try to find a way to deal with them but I wasn't I couldn't handle it dealing with them was not making me feel good and it was making me want to drink more but cutting them off I thought that it would be an immediate relief but it wasn't it was like I don't hate them I miss my parents mm -hmm. you know and I'm drinking because I'm alone. Every And the world is also saying you don't need to be around other people. So I don't have the support that I really need to grieve this situation. And the response that I got, like, from, like, Dara was like, you know, what do you need? You know, like, she was Yeah, like, I made a lot of trips to Tallahassee. Yeah, she made here. a lot of trips to Tallahassee. And she was like, what do you need? I just, I needed to be, I needed someone to be with me while I didn't drink. You know what I mean? Because, mm. of course, I love Dara. So being around her. It's fun to the point of who are you hanging around that you feel like you have to drink? And I right. realized it was when I was alone. I wasn't okay that when I was hanging around myself, when right. myself was alone, I felt like I had to have a drink to be able to even sit with myself or not be turned off by my own reflection or mm -hmm. my own truth or my own story. It wasn't, it was too fresh, you know? So for me, um, the other response I got though was that well, I don't feel bad for you. You know that alcohol is bad. Mm. And it's very triggering, like, when people die or commit suicide and things like that. And then you see all these people like, I'd rather you call me than yeah. to do this or do that. And it's like, in the instance that I reached out, like, I and I appreciate Dara so much for you understanding this is not the time to scold her. She right. is, She is saying, I need help. I have a problem and she was, and I was, I'm just so proud of myself that I don't drink. You know, eventually I got there. So after that, I didn't drink for, I didn't drink hard liquor. So my first step was just cutting yeah. out hard liquor and saying, you know what? I do enjoy the aesthetic of wine. Like I went to Greece and did wine tastings, things that are memories forever that I'm glad I was able to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I did that for a year. And then I had hard liquor again. I did wine and champagne, just wine and champagne for a year. Then I had hard liquor one time, and then everything went left. And I was like, you know what? I just can't fucking do it no more. <laughs> yeah. I tried. Like, Your stomach fuck said, it. Just what fuck are you it. doing, player? Like <laughs> my stomach, my life, like how I felt about myself afterwards. It was just like you didn't drink for a year just to drink and then still yeah. overdo it. And so I had to. I went back to therapy, and I was like, what the fuck is going on? Like, mm. what am I missing? And mind you, I've been in trauma therapy, so alcohol was a trigger to my body, period. Just tasting it right. triggers me. Um, that stress was living in you. And it was that stress it is living, and no matter how much out. work I do, yeah. I can heal, but it does not change my past. Mm -hmm. And, you know, being told that, oh, I, I did this or I touched you because I was drinking, mm -hmm. first of all, is not a valid excuse. Doing anything while you're drinking is not. And there are so many mistakes I've made in my past, and... To be honest, I felt like I had to say, you know what, the, 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 the relatable part of me, the honest part of me is like, you know what, some of that might be true for my dad's story, right? Yeah. That I did this because I was drinking. But the other part of me knows that I know plenty of people that drink that don't want to touch their kids. Like, Big that's facts. not a, an excuse, but yeah, not. it could still be a reality that he's struggling with alcohol. And I had to ask myself, how can you ask him to stop drinking and you can't stop drinking? Right. Mm -hmm. Have I hurt a, a child or touched anyone? No. But have I hurt or exasperated situations because I was under the influence and, and 
is I can't handle it. I can't handle it. And it feels good. So like even yesterday, you know, people I watch when people ask me, do you want to drink? And I say, oh, no, I don't drink. And they're like, oh, you just don't drink. And I'm like, oh, no, I just I love it too much. So I don't <laughs> drink. And I watch them like, oh, my God, I'm, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, no, don't take that away from me. I want you to offer because I'm enjoying the fact that people offer me a drink and I don't even want one. Mm. It's not tempting me. And every time someone asks me, do you want to drink? And I say no. Like, I'm proud of myself every time. because of your growth. Because I didn't just yeah. stop for, like, discipline. You can teach yourself to stop doing anything. Right. I love the fact that the desire has went away. And I can pat myself on the back every time. That's a form of balance, right? You you could be around something that you used to crave for so much and not indulge in it. So, that's yeah. to me, that's, like, the best form of balance. Yeah. Right? like I, It's like when people are like, you know what? I could eat dairy, but it'll fuck me up. So, I'm going to just... I'm going to just skip out on that. Like, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But I don't want you to not eat cheese around me. You know? <laughs> like, enjoy <laughs> yourself. You got a testimony, friend. Go ahead. Come through, testimony. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am. It's just like, you know, I owe myself so much more. And I just... I don't want the people or the situations of things that I did in the past be in vain. Like, I'm glad that I, I've i learned and I it took so much effort. It's not very easy for everyone to just cut off something that's not good for no. you. And we proud of you, friend. Yeah. You've seen it the takes, growth. It takes, takes yeah, a lot you of work. Yeah, you've seen the work. Seen, I've seen the growth. Work. I've seen the work. I've mm -hmm. seen when it's been bad and I've seen how great it is, how great it can be. So I'm very proud of you, friend. Yeah. Thank you. And what's crazy is that the business, everything that I do includes open bar. <laughs> and people it does do like to drink. People do. And yeah. I love that for people that can handle it. And yeah. I don't want to stop serving liquor at my events. But it's just like even the doors that opened up for me after I stopped drinking, it felt like it was something I had to let go of for my purpose to really mm. fully find me. Because I now own a content house that doubles as a social club. You want to bring it back full circle? What did you need? Space and opportunity. Space and opportunity, mm, space and opportunity. if you have not watched <laughs> yeah. the first episode of there Not Just go. Another Sex Podcast. <laughs> you have missed it. Okay? Go back and watch it. Um, so, yeah, I just, you know, what are what are y'all discipline items? What are the things that maybe you've had to let go of? Um, so maybe not during COVID, but uh, 2015, my life was like going, that thing was sliding downhill on a toboggan. It was <laughs> real fast. In 2016, I was like, you got to get this right. So at the end of 2016, I left Atlanta. I moved back home. And I was like, I got to remove distractions. Mm. I have to do something different because everything I've been doing is not working out. Mm. Now, I was already moving back home to take care of my mom. But I was like, what can I do to put me in a better place? So for me, it was, I was like, abstinence. I need to, not just the sex part, though. It was the removing because I was using dating and going out and having fun and having sex with people mm. as a distraction, as a crutch, as a way to get my mind off of all the other bad things that are happening, right? And we always talking about, like, why, if your life ain't right, why are you out dating? Baby, I needed some, I need something to get my mind off of all the other bad stuff. But moving yeah. back home, I said, I need to focus and I need to get right within myself. Mm. So let's take out the things that are not working for me. First thing was getting back into the gym more consistently, eating better and watching what I'm eating and really focusing on that, but also remove the distractions, which were dating and sex. I went abstinent for like two years and oh I didn't God. talk, but <laughs> I stopped going out. I stopped Damn. doing everything. <laughs> <laughs> but I knew I needed that because I was in Atlanta yeah. going, like, I was working 80 Outside. hours a week and still some, finding ways to go out and go on dates. And I was like, for what? You haven't even had time to be at the house, but you got time to go home, get dressed, and come back outside. And, listen, I had gotten arrested. I was like, this is a lot. Hey, this you got arrested? Right? <laughs> <laughs> this news is me. This news is my point. <laughs> I ain't around you on time. No, no I'm but around this Because my life is going down. Listen. And then I, I disappeared from everybody, right? You wouldn't yeah. have known because I completely went ghost. I was living up here and I secluded myself. I wasn't talking to my friends. I didn't go home for three years. I didn't see family. I wasn't hanging out. I wasn't traveling. I was up here crashing. And so when I got crash and burn. Listen, and then when I got arrested, I said, oh Whoa. not me. <laughs> I'm too pretty for jail. <laughs> I, I, I was in the whole cell like 
this is not where I belong. <laughs> Something has to change. I said, you have gone downhill. You are at rock bottom. Something needs to be different. Yeah. Let's figure it out. And no, nobody knew I got arrested because I was, <laughs> I was in there no like, problem. oh my gosh, who am I finna call? Who, who's going to help me? And that was the other problem. Like, I'm in the holding cell and I had no one to call. I had Damn. no one who could help me. Because you didn't me. have no numbers memorized? No, I wrote down some numbers, oh, but there was who I, was in Georgia with me to help me. But well, I'm about to call you from Tallahassee five hours away and be like, come get me. No, I need I need somebody. I'd be there in a couple of days. I was never like, I need out now. I can't do this. Like I'm in the middle of a cell. This lady is taking a shit in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> this girl is talking about like, oh, you got picked up off the street. And I said, That's some real <laughs> shit. No, I did not get picked up off the street. I do not belong here. (laughs) But that was, all of that was like at the end of the time before I moved home. And I said, oh, you got to stop. You were doing a lot. A hard pause on everything. So I went home and redid my whole life. (laughs) I said, we got to start over. You took us to Bali for your birthday. You was like, yeah, we need to go to Bali. It was the most holistic trip. (laughs) Because by then I was was back centered. So that was 2018. But 2016, 17, 18, like... By then, I was like, I need to, I was ready to be incensored. Yeah. Then the first two years, I couldn't date. I couldn't see people. I couldn't spend that energy on people because I wasn't spending any energy on myself. Mm, yeah. I couldn't give anybody anything because I hadn't given myself anything. So understanding that and being like, I think you can do things in discipline, but also what's my need for this? Was really asking myself questions about why am I doing these things and are they actually beneficial to me? And if they're not, then I need to remove that distraction. And so I, I went home. I was in the best shape of my life. Yes, you were. I, you know, I learned a bunch of new things. I went into a new field. There was a lot of growth that happened, but I needed to remove the things that were going to stop me from growing. And that was going out and talking to people. And because I'm... I'm not social until I feel like it. And then when I feel like it, I go overboard. Like, I, I be <laughs> so wanting to go fun. out, out. And then yeah. I'm like, mm, you like sitting in the house. Relax. Yeah. But the going out was helping distract me from everything else that was bad around me. And being at home, being by yourself. Being and by and yourself. And those thoughts are spinning in your head. I was like, I, I can't keep up. I can't do this anymore. I got to find another way. I commend anyone that pulls themselves th- themselves up by the bootstraps. Because it's like, as soon as you know you hit rock bottom... That's when the hard work really stop, like starts mm-hmm. because you're going to miss it for a while. You know, like it takes time to develop a new routine and new discipline mm-hmm. and, and things like that. And it's difficult because no one else can do it for you. And yeah, I used alcohol as numbing. You use people. But, you know, sometimes you're using your friends and you're mm-hmm. trying to get everyone to go through life with you. But whatever people are there to assist you on your life, they're they're going to play a role in you. But some of us are sometimes so supportive of everyone else. And you're using your support as a crutch. Like mm-hmm. it's so it, it's it's so real that you're using something and it may be even something that's positive and then it it turns toxic because you know how to even show up for others but don't know how to show yeah. up for yourself you manipulated and the yeah, situation like right. you're like oh i'm helping others but it's like wait but what do you have for you and that that was even something that i ran into with the podcast it was like you know what drinking on other people's show and doing all this other stuff but it's like how about not going on anyone else's show for a little while and put that same work back into yours? Yeah. So, mm. like you said, just pouring that same energy back into you. It's no one else can put you where you need to be or at, at all in any way. Like, they can only support you. But if you're not moving, there's nothing for them to support. You're not doing it together. You right. know, what you have is your life is cohesive with other people's, but y'all have to be on your own path. And whatever you need to do, if you got to break away to do that, you have to do that. For me, I don't, I'm not, I I, I, I'm tr- I try to be as present as possible, but I've learned that my purpose is not done. I have to build it brick by mm-hmm. brick. So when I'm not showing up or I'm not coming to this thing, I'm weighing it between what else I have to do because no one else can do it. No right. one else, you yeah, know, okay. I can delegate as much as possible, but my I'm trying to balance my energy, make sure I have time for myself, make sure the business is doing what it needs to do. And if the only thing that you and I are doing together is the stuff that makes me sluggish the next day and I can't do what I need to do, then right. you end up... You're a hindrance in my life. Yeah, and I, I don't hang out with you yeah. nearly as often. Now, if you're talking about like going to the spa or, you know what I'm saying, like things that I need that can be included as self-care, mm-hmm. that's how I hang out with people now. I don't even have time. I, like, I don't I don't want to just do lunch. I don't, Like, what are we getting out of this? Like, because mm-hmm. we don't have a lot of time. I have, I know what I want to do and it's 
I need to build it brick by brick, brick by brick, and I'd rather bust it out, like get right. it done. You know, like bust it out is a hell of a way to. to, <laughs> to yeah, yes, it is. yes, it is. <laughs> what you were touching, what you were touching on, is just vulnerability, right? You get to a place where you're like, man, I done hit rock bottom, and you have, you kind of have a conversation with yourself, and you say to yourself, all right, well, let me look at my life and see. Mm -hmm. What is this person? What is that person? What is this environment bringing to my life? Is it bringing value? And it's kind of like what you just said that like, I just can't go out on lunch anymore. If it's not aligned with my self care or my value or your values, why are we sitting here? Just to it's, see it's, each it's, other, just to it, catch it, up. Exactly. Like... So it has to me is, I think, I think the older we've gotten, we've realized that. And that's the reason why we've pivoted with, with our lives when it comes to whether it's drinking, whether it's whatever your vice is and whatnot. Yeah. But I think that is so key because the more vulnerable you become with yourself, the more you come into your own and then the closer you get to your purpose or the, the closer you move within your purpose, if that make any sense. Because you said that as soon as you stop drinking, what happened? The doors open for every, like everything that I needed that I was wanting to happen, every answer that I was like, I... Because I, I don't commit to anything unless I can, I don't, if I can't connect to it, I don't commit to it. Mm -hmm. And so I, I couldn't figure out what was next or I hadn't felt the next solid, like, what am I supposed to do next? Soon as I gave up liquor, every opportunity, and what's Clarity. crazy, as soon as I gave up liquor, I lost the Instagram page. Mm. I gave up liquor and I was like, now wait, this is some fuck shit. Like, I, <laughs> I thought I should get a reward. But it was like, okay, now you can handle what I'm about to have to strip you of because... You, I need to take away all these things so you can do what you need to do. And I remember, I know it sounds crazy, but one time I had cheated on this guy. Ooh, and I had went to church because I felt bad. <laughs> <laughs> I had felt okay. bad. Confession. Go ahead. <laughs> these are my confessions. <laughs> and I went to church because I felt bad. And I was like, damn, you really cheated on somebody. But that message in church was like, you got to sometimes get to the lowest of the valleys. like So that way you have no other, no other option but to go up. Right. And I feel like every time my life changes for the good, I always lose everything or I think I'm losing everything. Like even with sexual essentials, I was forced to kind of quit my job. You know, I was forced to quit my job. Yeah, um, yeah. And I was just like, the fuck? And then I was like, OK, well, I'll quit the job and I'll run the business full time. But I was doing property management, so I was able to stay at that apartment. And then a week for free. For free. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what? I'll just pay the rent now that I'm not going to work here anymore. And a week in, they was like, hey, you got to uh, you gotta, you gotta go, you. baby. Yeah. And so mind you, they like in a week, like when your last week is, you got to go. So mind you, I put in my two weeks notice and after a week has went by, you tell me I need to leave. So I found, a, I had to find a whole nother place and it was just so crazy how sometimes you try to... When God be like, you need to make a change, you try to make a couple steps and be like, oh, change. And then they be like, no, everything. No, you, you need to change. To the you end. be tiptoeing, yeah, like, like, okay, I made. No, because you're really trying to still be comfortable. Yeah. I didn't need to be there. I needed a space. And then I found a house in a week and had my own office space, like a full office studio yeah. set up in that house. Like when it's time to let go and move, sometimes it's time to let go of everything. Right. And, you know, I respect anybody that goes through that. And I really hope that you guys will take a look at your life and say, what do I need to let go of? What is standing in the way of, you know, in the way of me? Mm -hmm. What's my distraction? What is my distraction? It might be people and your distraction might be something good. Too much of a good thing. Yeah, too much of a good thing yeah. can be too much of a too good, good thing. For Become you. a vice as well. Yeah. yeah. Balance. You gotta have balance. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. Y'all be laying up for folks just to have some little comfort. Let's Ooh. Mm -hmm. All right, you calling the people out. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, we just told all our business. You done went to jail watching people poo. No. I didn't. You done cheated and went to church. I done cheated and went to church. <laughs> <laughs> now what have you been what doing? have you done hold on tell her I'm you a, got us out here by angel yeah. <laughs> come on now Just, right the sex symbol <laughs> hey you guys hope you're enjoying the show i just had to stop by and let you know that if you have not ordered your thigh high socks from sexual essentials you're behind i know how it feels to buy lingerie and you say "Ooh, i'm gonna be real sexy and put it on and it's sitting in the back of your drawer collecting dust let me tell you the thigh high socks are just so convenient they're super sexy and they're actually comfortable so instead of feeling like you have to make that large leap into lingerie try the thigh high socks your partner gets to see you looking sexy as well as yourself and they're super comfortable don't forget to use our code njasp for 15 percent off tell your friends and make sure that you get your favorite color before they're gone all right now back to the show 
all right, so we are going to move on to our advice. Um, our advice segment, um, you can also send in an email uh, for advice to not just another sex pod at gmail.com. Send us your letter. Make sure we have some details. Not a, like, not a full page letter, but enough details <laughs> so I can know what's going on. Um, but today's advice is having a sexual bucket list. Um, I know a lot of people mm. do New Year's resolutions, um, but whenever I start something new, I also consider myself sexually as well. That is a part of me as a person. So a lot of people be like, oh, I want to meditate more. I want to set some goals for this. I'm telling you, set a sexual bucket list for yourself for this year or this month. And that goal, that can work. It doesn't have to have a time frame for you. Um, and a sexual bucket list can look like things that you want to do with your partner or things that you want to try with yourself or things that you want to feel um, like, I mean, there are a lot of different ways to feel things. I know that last year I knew that I wanted to um, join the Mile High Club. Mm -hmm. And the Mile High Club is having, it's having, I believe, sex on a plane, right? I think it's supposed to be an intercourse. On intercourse a yeah. on a plane. Well, I was by myself. So um, <laughs> <laughs> I was by myself. But I did catch some orgasms on a plane. Um, and I tied this into a book. <sighs> Like three. It was a, it was okay. So look impressive. here. Impressive. impressive. It was nice. So I used a toy. I would make sure that I, I find it. I actually got it from erotic Budar, Um, and she probably actually has it on hand. You guys can DM her. Um, it's erotic underscore Budar, Um, and she has a discount code, code Samaya. Um, but there was a vibrator that had a USB port. Um, to charge it instead mm. of like it actually it came out like it looked like it was a USB for your computer like mm. that you store stuff on but it stuck out as a charger and you know in first class on the international flights they have the USB in the thing so for my 30th birthday I did a I did bucket list um, Thailand and where else did I go Bali I mean no I didn't Dubai. I lied I went to Dubai and Egypt or is that no that was, was that the, the week before, before. that no, was the week before the uh, yes. okay I went to the Maldives yeah Dara is my right hand, y'all. I would, I would forget. Like, how you don't remember? You I, went. Last year was busy. Last year was busy. Uh, I went to the Maldives and I went to Thailand, and so I wanted to take a. So th the place was a bucket list item, and then also flying first class overseas was a bucket list item. But also, I was like, okay, this is a good time to add in this yeah. catch an orgasm on a plane because you got your own little nook. Right. On the plane, you could close the door. Like, you got your own door. Now, granted, they can't see right into that bitch. Now, <laughs> <laughs> they just come look over. But, but at night, like, when the plane, like, go to sleep. Right. Oh, uh, yeah, I was in there. <laughs> 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 I was like, you hear that? <laughs> and, yeah, so it was charging. I had opened the box on the plane. I was charging on the plane. And, you know, that was an experience that I didn't need someone else um, with to have. Oh, I'm going to so, need that toy. Yeah, it was so nice. I wanted to do that. Too. Yes, the way that it was able to charge is what it what made it work. So you know they give you a little blanket. I was under there rubbing my stuff. It was, Your it was stuff. Rubbing, rubbing my, my stuff. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> now we done said all of this. Now it's stuff. <laughs> um, there are a lot of different toys out there um, that are also inconspicuous, um, and they can be used. Like they have necklaces that are vibrators, and you know things like that. So it's pretty cool. Give me um, the humming for me. Cause I know mm -hmm. even if it, it was, was pretty quiet, quiet, even if it's quiet, I feel like somebody's still back there. Like you hear that? Well, they give you a pillow, they give you a blanket. So like I had it layered. You're I had like over that. yeah, I had crossed my legs. Mm -hmm. I had put the cover on. I sound <laughs> <laughs> my crotch. I can hear it. I, I didn't <laughs> hear anything. Put Man, you know, no, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Please stop coming over here. <laughs> Please stop coming over here. Leave me alone. Do not disturb. <laughs> uh, so uh, that is my advice to you: make you a bucket list item and do some research. Don't. But no basic. I, I mean, if you want some basic stuff on there, Maybe but it's, it's put some effort into effort it. Put some effort into it. A lot of people don't. And, I, I, I think it's interesting because we we grew up with the idea of sex being a sensitive topic to talk about in any environment, right. and then people got like <laughs> life bucket list. Hey, I want to go to uh, Canada. I want to go see the Niagara Falls and shit like that. But never would one come to think of putting a sexual bucket list together and i think it's right. i think it's i think it's dope i think the, the idea of it is dope because it's kind of like people are just i don't want to talk about sex or yeah. even when you're dating we can't talk about sex too soon or yeah. sex is just a sensitive topic between your partner if, especially if you ain't being pleased by them and whatnot so Facts. to have a bucket list is kind of like 
having some intentional uh, intentionality behind enjoying yes. sex yes. because sex is such an important important part of life but again we're taught not to talk we're about skipping it, over it. Yeah. Say it's causing the conversation yeah, right? yeah, it, it yeah. is talk, especially yeah. if you have a partner you're like well if i have this bucket list i have to share it with you we got yeah, it like, you, got yeah. bucket list, bro. Yeah. you got one too bro you need one a too lot, a lot of people <laughs> say you know i don't want to plan sex that makes it boring but if i know what we're doing i can set the vibe like i can mm -hmm. set that up so it can actually happen and also i feel like just like when people tell me their goals, if I'm like, okay, do you have a plan? How are you going to figure this out? And he's like, oh, I just, I just, yeah, I'm going to be rich one day. And then like, okay, but you're not dreamer. doing anything. Like you're right. not doing anything. Like I want to do this one day. Like, are you serious? And a lot of people are like, oh no, I definitely want to do this in my relationship. I, I want to show up in the trench coat. And it's like, you didn't have four boyfriends and you still ain't showed up in the trench coat. Like you do not, when are you going to be, take it serious, the stuff that you want to do? Because right. you're an entire person. So it's not just emotional. It's not just the physical, you know what I mean? It's like actual intimacy and sensuality. Like you have to put effort behind creating that thing. It, yeah. And everybody tells you to put effort into everything else, but if you do not, your life will change when you address yourself as a as a whole, mm -hmm. and when you skip over your sexuality, you leaving money on the table. Not as a hoe, hoe. <laughs> just to be clear, just wanted to put that out not there. Not a hoe, a hoe. <laughs> uh, but yeah, when you when you skip over your sensuality and you don't cater to yourself as a fool, you you're not you don't even realize the balance that you're missing in right. your life and how much better you would be if all of you was completely satisfied and just like any other area in your life that comes with intentionality. So I'm challenging you to create a bucket list and it doesn't have to be as crazy as mine. This ain't your pussy. Do it like yours, okay? <laughs> this ain't your Do it pussy. for you. Do it for you, okay? <laughs> she might be just having better sex. Have I think, it, it, I th but I think it would lead to lead to better sex, and I think yeah, it would lead yeah. to conversations about sex that you may be apprehensive about talking Absolutely. to your partner. Absolutely. So. If you guys want to hear more about this, please make sure that you click below um, to join our Patreon community. We have over two hundred and fifty videos, classes, interviews, um, classes about. Um, mutual masturbation, masturbation and manifestation. There's an entire class on how I started my business, rubbing my coochie on there, okay? Um, and rubbing all of that, and talking about the sexual bucket list. So if you need more insight and have questions, tap into those things. This was a couple minutes of a segment. Go for the full thing. Being intentional could just be signing up and saying, you know, I want to join Samaya's Patreon because you got over 250 class. Like, I'm going to learn something. All you have to do is right. take the first step and sign up. Um, but another benefit is that we hop on here every week to discuss the podcast episode. So if there's someone else you want to talk to about it or you want to hear what other people are saying, this is a chance for you to join in on the co um, conversation. So. Show we Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. There's so much stuff on Patreon. <laughs> a lot of good stuff. facts. Yes. Um, so um, we're going to move on to the spiritual tip of the day. So y'all realize, um, since we're talking about like removing alcohol, most of the people that look good as hell, they either don't drink or they're vegan or they like, you got Angela Bassett looking good. Like, I don't, how old is she? Yes, Miss Mama's. Mm -hmm. Like, she looks so good. Good. Like, Alicia Keys. Alicia Keys doesn't wear makeup and her face it's, looks so... Skin is clear. Skin is clear. You got Tracy Ellis Ross. Like, like... She looks phenomenal. That's like bae. Bae, that's bad. That's okay. bad right there. But uh, you got the Best Man series. All of them, like the fact that they were able to do three movies over the span of twenty plus years and look and is, the whole cast still and the there? whole cast is there looking amazing. It's like, how do you do that? One of the things, um, and oh, you know who Maya, the singer. Oh, um, she looks so good. Oh, yeah, like she look good. she's vegan. And so the spiritual tip of the day is to do some yoga. Because really? that's where we went. <laughs> the, yeah, that's where it went. Because we're, we're talking about, we're, ain't nothing that's going to um, age you faster than drinking to the bottom of a bottle for the next 60 years. You're going to look dehydrated and ugly. And if you don't stretch, you're going to be a hunchback <laughs> one day. It's the, well, look, we named all those people and they look great. <laughs> They that's look, true. They look great because they're. We say that it's extra and stuff, and oh, that's boring. Guess what? Those boring things are working their body they are taking care of themselves you know so you don't have to become a yoga extremist but do a little bit of stretching in your day like i know that i'm guilty of it we'll sit here all day and then like my body is hurting i'm 30 years old how do i expect to look as good as angela bassett and tracy ellis ross if i'm not taking care of myself so your spiritual tip of the day is to try to find a way to 
add a little bit of yoga into your life. That could be just a 10-minute video. You don't have to listen to the music yeah. that they have on there. Put on your own playlist or listen to something inspirational for 10 minutes and find a way to add it in your life because at the end of the day, them excuses is not going to change you looking like spoiled milk mm. in 20 years because you're not taking care of your body. Yeah, I think the message behind it is uh, even if it's not yoga, do something that keeps you, keeps moving. you young. Yeah, Move. it keeps you moving. For me, you know, I do my meditation walk. Meditation so, walk every and day. There's a lot of benefits to that, but that's what work what works for me because I tried sitting still and I tried to meditate, but it just doesn't work for me. Yeah. So I have to I have to move while I'm meditating because it keeps me in flow. Yeah. And that's when the ideas start to come out my head and I'm able to just process things a little bit better. So do what works for you, that what keeps you young. I think that's the the main message behind it. Absolutely. Um and you guys, yoga is nothing but stretching. Yeah, it is. Okay. So don't think we being extra. That's just what it's called. Listen, don't, them joints going to start collapsing on top of you. I'm yeah. telling you. I you don't move now, you, you're not going to be able to move You're going to be stuck. You're going to be stuck. And, you know, w to be honest, when I look at what the elders look like and, like, some of our families, they don't look like Angela Bassett's and Tracy Ellis Ross's. And, we, and it is a luxury to even be able to take care of yourself. But when it comes to the self-care, before you skip to the trips and the mm -hmm. this and that, the self-care is... You know, doing a facial, that's not extra. That is making your pores look better, making right. your skin better. Like, y'all, like, sometimes you're so focused on something being bougie or, oh, you just luxury everything. Me taking care of my skin is luxury? Like, me taking care of my body, <clears throat> the only one that I have? Like, are you, are you missing the point that this is the only body that you get? So make sure that you don't, you know, take it for granted. Yeah, that, and that's that's for for us men. We get teased about that type of shit when you taking care of yourself. Only by but, immature people. Yeah, immature but people. but I think yeah. it's a form of a man tapping into his his feminine energy. Like you know, I like yeah. my skin to look clear. I like to smell good. I like my teeth to be white. Things we of that nature. We want you to have all those yeah. things yeah. too. Yeah. Yes. Because who is talking about, about you about not? A, man, a pimply ass man. Yeah, but but like y'all be having it, these beards, and it's like, bro, if you just go get yeah, a, you know, a put facial, some right. put some oil in your beard. Some them shit, man, like extractions. Yeah, yeah, get them extractions and stuff like that. Like, man, you get you a facial and then go get a fresh cut. Look here, the panties is mm. so again. All right. <laughs> so, um, tell the folks where they can find y'all. All right, and well, like like I told you <laughs> last time, y'all can find me in my bag. That's it. That's, it that's, 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 um, I guess you can find me on Instagram. I guess you can find I me. Suppose. Look here, I'm gonna tag them below, um, or tag their website or whatever it is that they do. Um, but I, I appreciate y'all for showing up for a great conversation, sharing your stories. Um, because I know that you know. I'm on here sharing my vulnerabilities, but I didn't rope y'all in in the conversation. <laughs> and that's I, usually how it works. Yeah, that's pretty that's much true. how these friendships, you know, th these friendships work. So I appreciate y'all uh, not leaving me hanging and sharing that. And also just being there, being a sounding board and not judging me when, mm, ooh, ooh, my eye tingling. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, but y'all see this beat. <laughs> I see this beat. Yeah. Make sure you watch my visuals on YouTube. We looking good as fuck out here, okay? Um, I just appreciate y'all for just being patient with me, not judging me, and, you know, uh, supporting me as I got to, to a place that I'm super proud of. And I'm glad that y'all can see it. And I hope y'all feel good about y'all selves because y'all played a part in that. That's that's a um, support system. I That's just a debt that I can't repay. So I love y'all very much. And enough of that mushy stuff. It's time to get up out of here. Um, make sure that you join the Patreon. Make sure that you tell a friend to tell a friend. Please rate and review the podcast. Make sure that you use the codes. Um, as you see, there is a Not Just Another Sex podcast bucket Bucket-head. right here. Um, get the merch. Absolutely. Um, we will also tag the sweatshirt um, that Dara has on made by a black woman-owned entrepreneur that also went to FAMU. Um, Here you go. Shout yes. out to the Rattlers. Absolutely. Everybody eat. It's nothing but Rattlers right here. Yeah, you it know? is, ain't it? Um, everybody mm. eat. Y'all know I'm always going to show love. So I love y'all so much. And make sure that you tune into the next episode. And if you are not caught up, please go back and listen to the last episodes as well. I love y'all, and we will see you next week. Bye. Bye. That's a wrap.